people are like white knighting Wayland. I'm like, don't don't tell people stuff works when it don't. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly, Daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Vince Stone, joined every week by Joe Bryan, and we're just hanging out in the pre-show, talking about things. We're talking about Strider, you know Strider, he's that wacko behind Lotris, he's just talking about <laughs> his favorite man crush, Steve from Gamers Nexus. The boy can't get enough of him, he's posting pictures in our Discord, he's like, oh, Steve. Oh, it's so sweet. It, it's adorable. I, I, it I really enjoy it. Come on, Joe, what's going on with you? Uh, I, I saw that uh, <laughs> old uh, Steve Husbando had another birthday celebration. He did. He did. It was we, on, and, uh, and in all fairness, he typically only has one a year, though. I, mean, I don't yeah. want to imply <laughs> that he's, you know, being greedy with the birthdays, having multiple ones. <laughs> No, it was it was a really wonderful birthday, especially since uh, it was his first day off work in several weeks. <laughs> so he had a nice, relaxing birthday with our family, and he got got lots of cool gifts and lots of good food. And it was it was it was actually really wonderful just spending spending an evening with family. And I got him a big. Uh, Oh, Barnes and Noble bookstore gift card because that's one of his favorite places to go, and I got him some other little fun gifts in shape to, in the shape of a black kitty cat. <laughs> I got him as actually, Ven, you'll like it. It's a cute little. Um, it's a black kitty cat. It looks like uh, our kitty cat Frodo, and it's one of those solar pets that that its head and its tail wobbles back and forth. <laughs> and he loved that. That was it looks one of like his it's got the shakes things. when you put it out in the sun. Yeah, <laughs> and he took it to work. I mean, okay. <laughs> yeah. And, and of course, you get really to hang cool... out with us last night. You're back with Track Mania. Yeah. We do that on Tuesdays where we get together and we do some retro tracking. If you're looking for that excuse, man, <laughs> you're like, hey, I like playing old games. It's like 11 to 12, 13 year old game. We got a little server, a little Linux server that we got set up. Now you can run Windows, you you can run Irix, you can run HP UX, however you want to come and join us. And we do that mm -hmm. at 5 p.m. and we come back and we do it on uh, Friday. So I've been working on getting IP video going in and out through the studio. Yeah. That's something I talked about on Saturday is uh, getting everything switched back and forth because I started playing around with, because I want to do, I want to stay on top of the WebRTC integration into OBS and some of the stuff that's going over that's going to be coming in the future that is going to really change the way you're able to stream between people. You know, let's say that you're streaming to Twitch, you're streaming to YouTube, you're streaming to TikTok because you're a broken individual, however you want to do it. And like, let's say you're doing like multiplayer, right? Like Jill's, we're playing, uh, you know, I, I don't know what was game me and Jill would normally play together. Uh, Talos <laughs> principle or track or media Talos, or something Talos like that. principle, definitely, yeah. And you're only seeing my screen. I'm like, oh, but it'd be cool if I could get Jill Street. Like traditionally, that's a pain, man. Like trying to get somebody else's while you're streaming, like with this web RTC and this web support that's coming in to at, be able to add sources would be as simple as like Jill opening up OBS and going boop, punching in my bits, and I could just pull it up as a source in OBS. It's going to change some things. Trying to stay Yay. on top of that. The moral of that story, it's not there yet. It's not there yet. I thought it would be interesting for um, trying to replace some of the stuff in the studio because right now what I have set up is, uh, you know, a quad 4K capture plus another capture card and a bunch of other capture cards on the three PCs. It's 13 HDMI cables to make all this work. I'm like, wouldn't it be nice if we could just replace all that with one fiber cable? which I already have plugged in all the machines. I'm like, all right, let's try this, because we've already moved all the audio to IP. You know, there's no audio cables running around the studio, and there's like 27 tracks of audio taking place at any given time. It's all switched digitally. It's great. Doing that with the video. So I decided to revisit NDI. And you know NDI from New Tech, which has been around for a long time. Last time I did a video about using NDI on Linux, New Tech's like, hey, let's put that on our blog. And a lot of people saw it. Mm -hmm. NDI 5 is out and OBS NDI. That's what we're using right now. So Jill's coming in Yay. over just mm -hmm. digital, digital bits, not coming in through the capture, coming in over the network. This little guy, you see a guy over there like blinking furiously? 
Like, what oh, are you yeah. doing to me? <laughs> That's a 10 gig fiber switch slinging the bits around and the video coming back to Jill is kind of going over the same way, same path, but it's getting turned into a virtual webcam, which is then tied into our Jitsi server, which Jill's getting. So Jill can see me like, hi, Jill, I can wave at you. <laughs> Jill's like, hey, look, Ben's waving at me. <laughs> and it hasn't exploded yet. So uh, that's going to be really neat to be able to kind of reduce just that amount of insanity. Plus, it'll be good to do another guide. Or how do you get NDI up and working reliably on a modern system? Having a fun time with that. So if everything Yay. explodes, mm -hmm. that's why. Lots of testing. Things to play with. Also, <laughs> also, I think I figured out what I'm going to do with Threadbooper. Oh. I've, I've been, what, like two years now I've been eyeing I'm patient, you know, you, you'll see when I do a video for like interfacing Linux, I'm like, I got a great deal on this. And you're like, how did you get a great deal on that? And it's because I waited three years. That's how you get great deals. <laughs> and I've been thinking about switching over to, you know, an Epic platform. But one of the reasons I, I'm like, okay, if, if I can reduce the need to have these capture cards and all this, I, I might be able to switch over to like, you know, consumer you know, regular AM5, because that'd be really neat. I'd save a lot of money. I don't want to do that just yet, because then I got to give up all these niceties that I've grown accustomed to, like mm. having three NVMe drives all connected directly to the CPU and all of my SATA ports and my 2x16 slots and my 2x8. Like, I don't want to give that up. Yeah. I don't. But what I'm going <laughs> to do is we're going to upgrade Threadbooper because I've, I've been on the Ebays. I've been looking around. Now, i got a first-gen uh, 1920X in there, which kind of does what it needs to do. It's just getting slow because that's first-gen Ryzen. You know, it's two six cores that have been infinity fabriced into one chip. Now, as far as I can go on this Threadripper is the completely unhinged 2990WX, which I think is a 64-core CPU? Fuck no. Yeah. Ain't no way in the world I'm getting that. That's a stupid CPU. It is. It's silly. It's beyond preposterous. Now, where do we go with that? Well, mm -hmm. my dream CPU for the system has always been the 2970WX, which is a 24 core. But those things are still silly expensive, like three, four hundred bucks. However, this got me looking. This has got me looking. I can get the 29, 2950X, which is the 16 core Gen 2 Ryzen for about 200 bucks. So I think yeah, that's going to be our upgrade path right there. Just kind of give uh, Threadbooper maybe another year of life, maybe oh, two there years. You go. Yeah. Yeah. That's Stretch a good idea. Because we're going to need a little bit extra processing power for the NDI stuff, and it'll work out. So yeah, there we go. We talked about that little blue card that showed up a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> this guy, the sparkle, the sporkle, the scuffed sporkle after I got done cleaning it because it didn't survive the cleaning very well. You don't want to use IPA alcohol to remove the thermal lube from the <laughs> case because it scuffs it really hard. That paint is on there, just not very good. So I have like a multi colored version of this. This is the Sparkle Eco AV1. Why is this interesting? Because it's itsy bitsy. It's teeny tiny and it's powered by the PCI Express hole. You don't need to plug anything extra into it, which means that you can put it into a low profile little tiny thermal note box and not have to worry about extra power connectors. It's got HDMI on the back. It's got too many display ports and uh, yeah, it's just the thing you need for HTPC, silent PC build. Now, because if you're looking at that, that's what got me curious. It's a single slot, half height blower fan. Now, if you know anything about quadros, single slot coolers, blower fans, you know it's going to be loud. It's extraordinarily loud. But if you're watching the video, you're like, why are you taking off the blower fan assembly? And Because I wanted to change the bracket out. And you got to do that. For yeah, cards. lots of steps. We were, um, <laughs> there it is, being nice and scuffed. Ugh. Uh, 
but it does fit in the tiny, super small little thermal note box that I built for a mm-hmm. rectangle. And of course, I wanted to do some testing with this, which I did. Nothing terribly crazy, but I went ahead and walked through, hey, what does it take to get Intel Arc running on a modern Linux distribution, this being Debian testing? And before we like Debian's old, I said Debian testing, which tracks it very close to whatever the current version of Arch is, um, because it's a rolling release as well. How do you get the open source up and running? Do you even want to bother with the binary drivers? What about monitoring utilities? Well, I found the one that exists. And of course, AV1 encoding, because, you know, if you have a Jellyfin server or if you want to transcode, if you want to live stream with the AV1 to YouTube, maybe in the future with Twitch, what does that look like? Got everything up and running, what you need to do for AV1 on OBS. Tried to get it running with Blender. Wasn't having it. Did a bunch of stuff, played around, and said, no. But what really surprised me was getting it up and running with DaVinci Resolve, kind of to the point where it launched until I tried to exit the cut page to go into the edit page and just DaVinci Resolve froze, maybe in the future. But of course, we do have Handbrake, AV1 encoding, test as well. And this is where it really gets obvious, though, because on a 5600G encoding AV1, AV1's the new hotness. It's like H.265, but it's free. It's open source. If I'm going to encode a little five-minute clip using the 5600G, it takes about 16 minutes, which that's a long time for a five-minute clip. Now, if we do it utilizing the AV1 encoder in that Sparkle, we can do it in about three minutes. Like, ooh, that's neat. Yeah. That's very interesting. And even though the A310 is not a gaming card, so I really didn't bother. I should have went more in depth with this because I didn't think a bunch of people would be interested in the feedback that I've received over the past couple of months asking, well, here, are people interested in this stuff? I'm like, meh, maybe not. Uh, I didn't go into like 1% lows or this is just, hey, does it run? Does it complete? We did superposition because how much faster is an A310 compared to the APU in the 5600G? About between 6 and 8% faster. So like superposition, 720p low, you're getting about 78 frames per second in superposition, while the 5600G, you're getting about 57. Like it's not a Talos principle. We all know that game, right? Mm-hmm. 720p <laughs> high, the A310, 144, 5600G, 137. So better? Yes. A little bit, except for Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk was the weird one. 5600G at 39 frames <laughs> per second, while the uh, A310 only managed 31. How much is this going to set you back, though? Well, 99 bucks, and that's where it's kind of interesting, because it's uh, super yeah. cheap, and it's <laughs> nice and small. You got open source drivers. And even if you overlook a couple of things, but there's a really big downside, Jill. Uh-oh. It's extraordinarily loud. Loud, yeah. I kind of knew that. (laughs) Yeah. And you wouldn't have known that by what? I'm not going to name names. I'm going to tell you, our theory knows who I'm talking about because it's our theory. And again, thank you for this because we got valuable information. He picked that up off of our wish list. Yes. The video I initially posted that started this adventure was from a YouTube creator that. I think is reasonably well known. And I watched that video. I'm like, that looks fun. Pretty dope little card. Okay. That's, uh, let's, I wonder how that's going to work, you know, on Linux. Then we get the card. Then we find two things that bugged me pretty hard that were glossed over in this YouTuber as a review of the sparkle. (laughs) One, is that in order to change out the bracket, you have <laughs> yeah. to remove the cooler. And void the warranty, huh? <laughs> Air quotes, void the warranty sticker, right? Yeah. Which is not really enforceable. <laughs> but how many times, like in my life, I think maybe two or three times I've had to remove the cooler from my GPU. That's not something most people ever have to do. It's got to, something's got to be wrong with the GPU before I'm even going to think about like popping that off and replacing it. Cause then you get to deal with the thermal pads for the memory. It's not a good experience out of the box. That was never brought up in that video. And another thing was not addressed is the noise. And this thing's not, <laughs> it's not just like, Oh, well that, you're being picky. You're being fussy. It's not 
you know, because some people are like, well, it's not completely silent. I can't live with this torture. No, this thing, you don't want to be in the same room with it. Yeah. It's like a blade server. <laughs> it's, it's as loud. If you've ever heard a quadro at full tilt, imagine that at a higher pitch. Yeah. <laughs> like you could not use this in a desktop. And knowing those two pieces of information, I'm not sure that I would have been interested in, because I was like, well, this might be an interesting card to add. Yeah. An AV1 encoder to, you know, a 30 series NVIDIA or a 60 series AMD. But you can't use it like that. It's too loud. Yeah, it would Why be nice, this? you know, if another brand soon comes out with the single slot low profile and see how, how like, quiet it is compared. But yeah, I'm very perplexed. As to why uh, that particular um, person on YouTube left out such critical stuff. You know, never ascribe malice when, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was either just, it's, it's too much, too big a thing to say oversight. You know, there's no oopsie there. I'm like, what was it because you got you know, review samples from Sparkle and you don't want to upset them? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. Anyway, that was kind of wild. That definitely worries me. But uh, yeah, big thanks to Arthurian. And um, the video's done very well, surprisingly. Uh-huh. Uh, I shouldn't say beautiful. surprisingly, but <laughs> uh, a lot of work went into it. I got about 37 hours clocked into the, you know, unboxing, testing, writing, uh, production, post-production, article write-up. Head over to interfacinglinux.com, all the benchmarks, all the stuff's there. And uh, yeah, I wasn't expecting, because we have Interfacing Linux has got its own YouTube thing now. It's, you know, the side project of the side project. And um, I didn't expect this one to, the video I'm in pre-production on right now, which is that Focusrite uh, Solo Gen 4, because you want to have a couple of YouTube videos kind of just like sitting there before you make one that you know is going to get some traction. Why? Because you want people to subscribe to your channel and like you want to have other stuff sitting there for them to watch, you know? Not the one and done. Yeah. And I already had some stuff, you know, that's why I was putting, like, Vin, why are you making videos about real-time kernel and CUDA compilation? One, it's a long-burned video, you know, people are Googling for that. and But it's never going to be a high-traction video, but it's a information-dense, important video. To, and... A lot of those videos are just like low-key, slow-burn ones. This one, I expected, you know, maybe a thousand views on eventually, like the uh, Noctua thing, right? Mm -hmm. Get yeah. about a thousand views on. People just can pop in out of curiosity, and like it'll just slowly tick up over the years. And um, yeah, put this out. It popped off uh, Monday after well, evening, I think, and the YouTube algorithm looked at it for a second and was like, I'll have me a bit of that. Oh, it just kind of shot up, and like we were looking at it before the show, like it went from yeah. uh, like three, four hundred views to like almost ten thousand right now. Yeah, and, seventy-five um, comments and almost six hundred likes. Six hundred likes, <laughs> and about uh, four hundred new subscribers. Now, this is what I want to focus on. I, I don't think <laughs> I've ever seriously asked outside of like smash that bell, fam. If you got a YouTube account. And you want to do old man Venna solid. One thing we got to do is we got to get to a thousand subscribers. Cause right, like right now there's no monetization, nothing. I mean, there's still ads on these videos. Old man Venna ain't getting none of that. We are genuinely lighting money on fire right now, mm -hmm. but we want to send a signal to that glue stick munching algorithm that people are interested in this type of content, you know, no nonsense, no BS. I'm still going to make jokes, people. It's me, but <laughs> you know, imagine if we could take some of the technical know-how of um, Strider's waifu, Steve, from Gamers Nexus, and mix it in <laughs> with some of the nonsensical derpery of Jill's waifu, Linus, from Tech Tips. Yes. <laughs> and we could throw down something like that. that that's kind of <laughs> what I've been envisioning for the channel later on. But yeah, you can do me a huge solid. There will be a link in the description of this YouTube video or head over to Interfacing Linux and just click subscribe. You can disable notifications. It's not going to hurt my fee fees. Mm -hmm. And if you can do that, the quicker we can get to 1,000 subscribers. Yes. That'll be great. That'll send a good signal to YouTube. And uh, yeah, there's no Patreon or like if you want to help out, you can join the Linux Gamecast Patreon because that 
math equation still works out. The less money I spend here, the more money I can spend there. And of course, there's a Amazon wish list uh, for interfacing Linux, but it's just full of like video cards. Like, I think the next mm-hmm. thing I want to do is like build a name five um, test bench. I oh, want to nice. do this stuff. Like, I yeah. want to do like AV1 compare. Like, what is the different real questions do I have? What's the difference between AV1 on like quality wise between AMD, Intel, and NVIDIA? Mm-hmm. And gaming benchmarks. I know gaming benchmarks are silly, but that's a good indicator. Like, when you look at something and you're like, hey, those are games I actually play. And I know how fast they run on my existing GPU. I could make those comparisons. I'd like to do something like that. Maybe in the future. Stay tuned. Interfacinglinux.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, dot .tom. Yes. Don't go to dot .tom. <laughs> I don't think that's a legitimate uh, top-level domain. But if it is, <laughs> let me know in the comments. But yeah, thanks, everybody, for uh, checking out the video. And Yay. we'll do some more. We'll do some more. I didn't uh, expect this video to pop off. Our Theron is uh, responsible, legally blind in chat. Everybody give a, he sure is. a round of uh, feet <laughs> for that. Um, kind of caught me off guard. Like I said, I thought a couple of people would watch the video, but this one's uh, got an interesting, it still has a hockey stick trajectory, according to the analytics. So we'll see where it's at next week, but it's good. Uh, getting some new people looking at like hey Yay. linux can do this other stuff and i'm like yes it can Absolutely. that's awesome let's uh <laughs> get everybody together get them informed get them the right information accurate stuff without the uh just static and nonsensical crap that has turned into what youtube is these days you know mm-hmm. yeah misinformation <laughs> just silly, silly yeah stuff <laughs> uh so if we, we we can do a retro youtube channel where just honest with you and tell you what things do and test them correctly. I know that sounds crazy, but yeah, the, that's in the future. We're, we're just going to see how it plays out. Rock and roll. Go check it out now. Mm-hmm. Oh, I feel like I've been chilling for 30 minutes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Jill, talk that about great. <laughs> uh, every Linux user's favorite GPU company. Yeah. So this is something really excited exciting have you ever wondered why some linux users have issues with nvidia gpus on wayland and some don't i mean i i never have but i know so many people who have had issues well there's actually a fix that was just recently merged in the wayland protocol called explicit synchronization and explicit synchronization is actually really nicely explained by Marias Nestor over at 9to5linux.com as explicit sync. It's a new protocol based on DRM synchronization objects where apps explicitly tell the user space graphics driver, kernel, or compositor when rendering is complete. Until now, when apps rendered things, they weren't rendered immediately. This method is called implicit sync and involves apps recording a list of commands with the OpenGL or Vulkan drivers for the graphics card to execute, which could lead to the issues some of you are experiencing with NVIDIA and Wayland. Uh, I I just thought that was a, a marvelous explanation. And, you know, one of the issues with implicit sync is that sometimes apps aren't aware which tasks it is synchronized to, and thus, you know, accidentally aligning to GPU commands, having nothing to do with the task at hand. And these accidental synchronizations will no longer happen with explicit sync. And explicit sync will actually boost performance because it gets rid of the middleman between the drivers and apps and tells them directly instead of having to look at a list of commands and then their dependency tasks. So it's much more efficient. And this is really great news for NVIDIA GPU users on Wayland. And as the explicit sync protocol makes its way to Wayland compositors, it is actually a huge step to adopting Wayland on Linux. And the NVIDIA proprietary drivers can live in harmony with the open source AMD and Intel Mesa drivers on Wayland. We're getting really close um, with insight to where Wayland is going to reach feature parity with X. Yeah, it's it's getting there. It's getting there. That's great. There's, There's there still a some... smorgasbord of like, well, that doesn't work yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And like some people, 
well, you know, we talked about this on like Linux Gamecast. Like people are like white knighting Wayland. I'm like, don't don't tell people stuff works when it don't. <laughs> yeah. If Wayland works for you and everything that you do, that's awesome. You keep using it. You're the ones we need out there using Wayland. Report those bugs. Yeah, there's still a bit of bugs. I'm right now uh, been 24 seven on Wayland, and it has been fine for me for the apps that I've needed to use. But there are issues like with doing screen capturing and uh, some video apps not working and but th things are getting fixed <laughs> yeah this is good to see and it, it was fun listening to you trying uh, not to mix up because your brain wants to desperately confuse implicit and explicit explicit yeah i was very careful <laughs> that's a struggle <laughs> yeah your brain's like that's the same word man just whatever <laughs> Oh, right. Uh, all right. We got another little thing in here. Um, yeah, we do. Endeavor OS on an arm? Why would you want to run an operating system on your arm, Joe Bryant? Uh, that seems silly. It, our Arch one's really nice, actually, on the Raspberry Pi. So this is really sad news in the Linux community. The ARM version of Arch-based Endeavor OS is no longer going to be developed for the ARM platform. And this is due to not having enough people to maintain it and enough time to keep, keep it up to date with the x86-64 version. So this was, I, I put this in our show notes because this is a call, call out. If you're a developer interested in keeping the Endeavor OS ARM project going, contact the Endeavor OS team and the Endeavor OS ARM GitHub page and, and sign up to that. Because I'm just really sad to see this, this go. In fact, Endeavor OS was one of the first distros that I installed on my Raspberry Pi 4 and my newly acquired uh, over six months ago Raspberry Pi 5. Me? Not been terribly impressed with the Raspberry Pi 5. I think it's a good piece of kit. I think it's reasonable value for the price, but I wasn't blown away by it. And one of the things that has prevented me from picking it up is a good case how long has that raspberry mm -hmm. pi been out now <laughs> now it's been oh over six months yeah somewhere in there right <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it's been a minute yay i'm happy now introducing the argon neo 5 m.2 the argon yay. neo 5 exists but now they have the m.2 nvme pci express case for your raspberry pi 5 at 38 dollars, and it is sold out <laughs> And it's been sold out, except for yesterday when I was um, muddling. I'm like, ah, maybe I should get it. And it wasn't <laughs> sold out. Now it's sold out again. It's got, the, it comes with the case, heat sink, clever design. And in the bottom, you can route the, uh, that silly little uh, PCI Express cable yeah. around and under <laughs> it and put your NVMe drive. And they got a nice little uh, list of uh, drive types. A couple of them, right? Yeah. Look, looks pro. Yeah, it re it really does, and it looks like there's a little wiggle room for those drives that are maybe a little thicker, a little longer. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. and, and instead of putting that hat on the top, this is taking that silly little ribbon cable and routing it under the bottom, and you know, it's a foot. Yeah. Don't call it a hat; call it a foot. Yeah, <laughs> this is true. <laughs> and it sits under it. Really, the only like, er, I don't know. The the one thing. It, <laughs> It's got all the uh, slots on the back, like my Argon 1, which I'm, you know, I like it. it puts everything on the back. You got uh, two USB 2, two USB 3, then you get the Ether Noodle sitting back there, which is good. The only thing I don't like, and I understand why they had to do it, but I would have preferred an even taller case if it meant that I could have all the power and display output on the back as well. Yeah. Instead of like cool. having that hanging out of the side of the case, if mm -hmm. I was like, no, no, again, I'm not going to have a display ever plugged into it. But if I did, you know, I would like, because that's one thing about the Argon 1 I have for Raspberry Pi 4 that's running the Jitsi server right now is it put everything on the back. Yeah, very Which nice. is good. You know, I, you know, I don't have to worry about it. I can just have it like taped down to the rack and just plug everything in the back. I don't have to worry about like routing cables from the side, which doesn't sound like a big deal until it is that it can get on your nerves. Mm -hmm. I got to think a new member of our Motley crew. Yeah. 
Hi. The Linux Gamecast family, the audience, the not a cult. One Casey Clism has decided to join us on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast, making this show possible. We keep rocking and rolling with this, and we don't have weird ads, and we're not trying to sell you mattresses. This is completely creator funded with your support. Now, Casey's been around for long. He's like, I know that name. Yeah. Casey synced yeah, up, I remember him into and- our uh, Discord. Casey's like, yeah, yeah. but I'm like, hey, all right, hey. It's yeah. always good to see new people <laughs> when they come in because you get the big welcome parade and everyone jumps on you and, you know, like, except for, you know, we're like, mmm, fresh meat, which is good too because you, you got to set it up. We have a very, very good Discord server that is just all over the place. It's great, filled with smart mm-hmm. people. You got Linux questions. They got Linux answers, and I'm in there too. Jordan's in there, Jill's in there, Pedro's in there. We don't just have it to the side and like occasionally visit. No, nope, we're in there chatting, getting stuff done seven <laughs> days a week. I want to thank you very much, Case Closum, for becoming our latest patron. And if you'd like to do that, patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast, best way to support the show. And uh, yeah, thanks everybody for uh, subscribing to Interfacing mm-hmm. Linux. That was dope. Cool. Yay. Okay, can we do some credits? Yeah. Thank you, and Linux love to you all. Yay, we have our advisors, Omegas and Artharin. And thanks again, Artharin, for all you have done. Our executive producers, Barbrant, Scott M., our Chicago Kicks people, Empty, Blasphemia, King Bonge, and our sea monsters, Hakeem, David, Darkwing, System T, Mark, DSNG, Joe, Dirty Dean, <laughs> our Death Notes, Back, Dodger, Rue, Turnover. <laughs> Our chairlings, oh my gosh, so many, I can't name them all that quickly. (laughs) I only got through a very few. (laughs) You know what I can do next week? I'm going to render that out at uh, not 0.3 speed, so it takes about four minutes. Oh, that would be cool. Let's see if we can do that. (laughs) If you get a chance, uh, Jordan's going to be back tomorrow, live stream. Twitch.tv, yeah. Forge Last Linux Gamecast, no idea. I might be joining him because we were threatening to do something together on Thursdays. It just We're going to see how that plays out. But thanks mm-hmm. for watching. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Love you all. <laughs>